uh, this is for uh, the other that we uh, be watching um, this video on YouTube. <laughs> Yes, uh, you know, the two of us, we, we know about these things. Uh, you might be able to, to add a few more uh, other th interesting things that I don't know because I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I don't know everything. But, um, okay, th this chapter is about maintaining R and it, it, it's about mainly uh, on uh, talking about packages. And when you need to like uh, set up your system in a way that you uh, can have the most updated version of your packages. And in in uh, in our studio, there, there is a um, visual pane that where where you can um, uh, up, update the packages directly. Okay, and then uh, as you can see in this in this image. Uh, you see if there is a version of uh, an updated version available. Uh, it is not. Uh, uh, it shows like, for example, the, the second Bioc manager. Uh, this is available because the, the first version is point one and the second version is point two. So you know that you can, uh, if you like, you can uh, update this second. Other, other packages may, may show this, the same numbers. So the same version, and so you you can have update that. Okay, so um, going going back to uh, to R, just to have a quick uh, live demo. Okay. Um, okay, so basically, we here we have uh, in this in this um, uh, where is the viewer pane? Uh, the, there is another tab which is packages, and here you can even install some packages. Or update packages. Uh, it's it's quite straightforward. You just click on update, select your package as in the in the image, uh, and then um, install update. Okay. For example, uh, I have book down, which is need to be it does it does need to be updated. So I would. Uh, I, I click book, book down and then install update and, and it will do all the things. You can do all, all the packages all together, selecting select, select all and then install all, all the packages. I want uh, uh, to be able to suggest to do that because, uh, okay, now R is um, it, it is the most updated version. So there, there is a new version, many bugs are, are corrected, but packages are some, some, somehow uh, can, can, can um, uh, you know, th 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 there may be conflict sometimes, somehow. So I, I won't suggest you to do that. But uh, it, might, it might be it might be a, a suggestion to update every, every all the packages always updated, but somehow uh, it might be a cause of, of, of some problem. And for this for this uh, uh, on this board first, uh, I show you uh, what happened to me be before uh, installing the last the last version of R. <laughs> okay, so. Basically, I um, I was dealing with spatial data, and uh, it requires um, a few packages. Okay, uh, it didn't have, and these packages were uh, quite uh, you know enforced, so um, articulated. Let's say articulated, so with many dependencies uh, and many things, and uh, some 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 packages you you could install them. Uh, even if you had uh, an old version of R, but this went into conflict with other packages I already had in my library. So th there's few few things that you can do to check um, if 
whether to install um, an update for package um, based on your R version, the R version that you have installed in your machine. Okay. Um, okay. The, the, the few steps that I suggest to do is first, um, you have some functions to, that you can use, like check whether which packages are available, uh, see um, if you have any dependencies that you haven't got installed, and then you can install directly the dependencies. But um, if you want to check it uh, um, and, and install the updated uh, on your specific R version, you need to add this option. So you update the package. For example, you want to update all the packages in your, in your library. You can do it with this function, update packages, instead of using the, the um, GitHub uh, um, in, uh, in the Astuide. But then you need to you add this option, check built equals true. So it will check the, the version uh, against um, against the version of your own. So what I did is to once the conflict arises, so you need to check all the packages because you don't know which one. You maybe have installed uh, uh, you know a bunch of packages all together while you were doing things, and then something arises. So like I was attempting to use the add-ins, uh, and and the session um, break it. So um, abort uh, with nonsense. So shut everything down and then everything. Um, and I needed to restart R uh, back again. So I've been searching on the internet, the Stack Overflow, some, some uh, blogs and everything. So I found this, this turnaround. Basically with this syntax, so you check the uh, installed packages in your machine. And you, if you do this, like you have this function, if you run this function, it releases a list. Uh, oh, basically, it's a, it's a, 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 a data, um, it's a data set, okay? So it's a data, what class is this? Uh, let, let's see. If I can um, maybe see. Okay. I can. Can I do this? Okay, this is a matrix, an array. Okay, um, I put this in a data frame with string as a factor, row names, uh, uh, and so on. So now I have this uh, this new data frame, uh, which is uh, uh, made of um, lists. Because if I do um, like packages, you know, the inside the few uh, list, so it's a list that contains other um, uh, sets. Okay, so if I want to see uh, when my packages are built to see whether they are, they could be in conflict with my R version, I will choose built. Uh, and uh, here there's uh, the, 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 the R version of all packages. Uh, so I can see that my, th this version is 2.1, this version 2.0. So if whether uh, some old versions, uh, or, or if I have an old version of R or another version of another package can be, can go 
into conflict. So, uh, and to check this, uh, I can use this function as package version, uh, which um, basically is an interesting function from the base package. Uh, and then you the, there's few other function. I'm I'm not uh, um, I'm, I don't use this function very much. So um, sometimes I find them uh, just um, because I need to find a solution for something. Uh, but uh, you know there there's many uh, for for anything you need. And um, so I use this function on on this list build. Because this is a is a list. No. So this is this is a ah, okay. This is a uh, it's a vector. Okay, this is a vector from from the list. And yeah, uh, it's it's normal. It so, comes in as character, and you want to treat you know you want to think of it as that special kind of number that a package, uh, mm -hmm. you know, version is. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is a, I'm, I made a confusion. So this is a, I made a data frame. So this, this, um, uh, this data frame contains some vectors. I don't know why I said the list. So contains some vectors. And uh, if I select the built vector, I have uh, all the versions. Okay. So now um, uh, I set this as a package version. Um, and then um, I don't know if you if you can see um, this data set. So you have the package, the the library part, the version, the priority, the dependencies, and all the other uh, information. But sometimes the version can include some uh, missing values, uh, as well as the priorities uh, and, and other things. So in this case, the priority contains a missing value. So uh, I, um, uh, so basically, I select this as a missing value. And get the the R version, even this R function, for example. Um, so this is my R version, it's top 2.1. And I select all the packages built uh, before my version. Um, then select the package version and build. Okay, so if I do this, now I have this new data data uh, data frame that contains the package version and build. And then I can now update all the packages, check build, I get the Maya version. So this is done, but when when the conflict arises and, and and so you had the problem you need to go back so in, it's not enough that you install the update because you need to solve the problem so there is this library the checkpoint if you if you use library checkpoint you can create a checkpoint uh when the problem uh so i had the this version of r so i created a checkpoint and then uh, I went searching for packages uh, and, and set the repo. Then uh, I created a list of all packages. I made a snapshot. Uh, so, and even a, a CSV. Uh, to have to have to be sure that this was um, saved, and then um, uh, I selected all the packages to remove. Okay, 
I applied this thing to remove the packages. And then finally, I stole all just the packages with the right version. So something, uh, something to be aware of with all this, the yeah. checkpoint package uses the Microsoft R archive network, the MRAND, which is going away uh -huh. um, sometime soon, if it hasn't, yeah, it's shutting down July 1st. So uh -huh. um, if you are relying on this uh, workflow, just FYI, uh, there is some talk about what to do for people who use it because that network is going away. Um, mm -hmm. So. Okay. So. <laughs> but th so that's going like if you run into problems with versions, um, mm -hmm. often uh, the package uh, RNV or RENV, R E N V, um, I think we've briefly talked about it. Uh, we've talked about it in one of my other book clubs. So I can't remember if we talked about it here, but that one is good. Like once you have used it, it, it deals with the problems with the versioning. But if you're going back to an old project that didn't use it, then uh, you know that won't it won't solve old projects. So it is um, here. I'll share the link in the chat uh, as soon as it comes up. There we go. But again, it only works from the point in time when you start using it. You can't uh retroactively make a project um i mean you could kind of make that work with um using the checkpoint package you could like put your pet your um put your system into the state that you your old thing was in and then use renv to like save that state and then going forward it will know the versions that you had installed so I guess that's probably the way to to deal with this. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we 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 said all these things. Then um, you can as well, uh, you know, downgrade a package, uh, specifying a version when you know which 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 version you need. Uh, and then the, the the chapter talks about the the library uh, when uh, when you update R and you want to save the library. But uh, so far, mm, I uh, I agree uh, mm -hmm. with the author, um, which is better to to have the the most updated uh, packages for for the last version of R when you update R. So. Um, it explains to how to create a direct directory um, uh, or to find the directory of your library, but then it doesn't uh, actually suggest to, to use the old library, uh, but rather uh, reinstall the packages, uh, which it won't take very long, very so, uh, that long. So now that now that we ended with the with the chapter, I'd like to show you something. So uh, you know about <laughs> the chat uh, GPT? Uh, yes. Okay. So I was uh, at a meeting today, so they explained how to use it, and re it's really impressive. So uh, I was trying this like uh, install a package in R. Okay. Oh, you need to, yeah, and you might not be able to reconnect. Uh, I it's saw busy a all demo. the time. Oh, all right. It's working good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's working. <laughs> um, I saw a demo with a, uh, both a Python and R uh, code. That was really impressive. So it worked. So it releases a code. Yeah. You need to be really careful because it, um, they call it hallucinating, that it'll just make up 
um, functions or it'll make up a package that doesn't actually exist. It'll make up arguments to a function that aren't real arguments. And so like, if you, if you say, or like, like that, like that's not how you install it in Python. You know, why does it say that that's Python code? Ah, oh, that's Python. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, and then, and if you tell it, um, I want to install it on a specific date. Like, you know, you could just type that right now. Uh, I want to install dplyr, um, how it was on, um, on, and then pick a date. And in uh, when? Yeah. And it might make up, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, okay. It's getting there. It's not bad. Um, yeah, it's weird that it doesn't know that that's our. Now. But yeah, it's making up like, was version 085 in September 2020? I don't know if that's actually true. It just kind of makes things up sometimes. It, so you have to be careful. Don't trust anything that it says as actually correct, <laughs> but you, it's a good starting point. Yeah. But it'll say things with certainty that aren't necessarily true. Because <laughs> it doesn't know. Um, and something to remember when you're doing this is it remembers what you have talked about already in this chat. So like you probably wouldn't have to say in R since you were already working in R. Um, but yeah, so it does pretty, pretty well with okay. this stuff. I mean, cause these are, you know, one of the sources that it's probably using, uh, would be the, um, the book we're reading, you know, it had that available when it, uh, built the, the model. And so if you're using phrasing that was in that, in the book, um, it's likely to, or it's possible for it to pick that up. Um, on the chapter material, one of the things that I've been doing a lot, you know, like there are all kinds of tips on how to make lists of what packages you have installed or whatever. And when I install a new version of R, I consciously um, don't reinstall things until I need them. Cause you know, R studio will tell you, oh, to run this script, you need these packages. Um, I don't, so I don't do that until I need them because I, otherwise I pick up all kinds of crap that I never actually need again. And there'll be all these tips that say, oh, you can make these lists of all the things you have installed, but I don't want everything I've installed. I only want the ones I actually use. So, yeah, so this is, it's doing pretty good. Uh, yeah, so far all these functions look to be real. So that's nice. But what is this uh, S? CSS, I don't, um, what is that? Uh, um, it's, uh, a, it's like a preprocessor, um, for CSS. So it's just saying it's, uh, using its default CSS, I think. What can I ask? Make a code that calculates the mean. <laughs> uh, um, well, I, so, I mean, you can get really detailed into specific yeah. problems with ChatGBT, and it does a pretty good job. Um, I One thing that I've done is if I'm writing, uh, like writing a package, I will give it my code and just say, you know, like, help me optimize this. And it'll find some things that could be cleaner. It also, that's where it often is like, oh yeah, you could just use this function that doesn't actually exist and it'll clean everything up for you. It's like, um, yeah, but that does, function doesn't exist. Um, so it's getting like this January 30th update is quite a bit better than uh, the old ones. It's impressive. Yeah, yeah. no, it definitely is. And there's a, um, there are a set of packages that will inter interface with the API 
that chat GPT uses um, with, from within our studio. Uh, GPT Studio and GPT Tools, I think, are the names of them. We'll make sure. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> I said, make a model in R. And it's explained to make a model in R. You first mm -hmm. need to specify the type of model you want to build. <laughs> uh, yeah, so now the things that I think are really cool, now just say, um, you know, like, uh, say, now use tidy models. And just that. So it'll it knows what it just did and it'll go, okay. And so it takes that thing that it just did and updates it to tiny models. Um <laughs> yeah. So... And again, it looks like it's doing it pretty well. That's and this kind of thing is what it's super useful for because it's something that. Uh -huh. It's creating a bunch of boilerplate code that close that yeah, code that yeah you should then go carefully read it and make sure it's actually doing what you want but you, you know it's easier to edit than to write all this from scratch uh -huh. so yeah <laughs> I should use yeah. it I I think I will I'll try to use it to <laughs> uh, generate my slide deck for the next meeting and see how it does. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, okay. All right. So um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So, anything else? Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, as far as the material in the chapter, that pretty much covers it. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing nine and 10, which is setting it up in our dev environment and installing a source package. Um, I recommend anyone, you know, watching at home or whatever, uh, run through chapter nine to make sure that your dev environment is set up because it's different for each system. And so, um, you know, we'll wanna check uh, that we're ready to go. And then we'll go through some stuff about installing source package or packages from source. Um, Yep. <laughs> I think that's it then. You have anything else? Oh, oh let me let me um grab this uh URL oops uh real quick. So there's there are these two packages, GPT tool or GPT Studio. Oops. Let me get the chat up. That's GPT Studio and uh, GPT Tools. That um, if you're interested in the chat GPT stuff, I actually haven't used them. Like I have these packages, but I haven't played with them much yet. Um, but they integrate chat. Um, they integrate the GPT models into our studio so that you can like, um, like, uh, you know, tell it to write documentation for the function that you just wrote and it'll create the documentation block, um, things like that. So it's some interesting ideas, at least. I'm not sure yet how well they work, but it's, they're neat Thank ideas no, no matter what. So play with those. Uh, they will, so something to watch out for is these actually use, you have to set up an API key. And if you use it a ton, it'll start costing money. So like pay attention to that. <laughs> so, um, but they walk you through how to set it up um, and it's very cool. All right, I so yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to write slides for, I think I'm going in a couple of weeks now. I'm gonna try to write my slides using chat GPT and see, uh, maybe I'll show both versions, the ones before and after I edit them. Um, <laughs> All right. I will see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye.